Good morning, everyone. I always have so much fun getting this thing going. Okay, we're on. All right, so we are um, we are going to do some things with uh, acorn squash, and I have also a parsnip here. So we're gonna get these guys going. And I actually was going to start this earlier because the, uh, hey Manik, good morning, nice to see you. Yeah, I was going to get these going earlier um, and I forgot, I got really busy and I didn't realize what time it was. <laughs> but anyway, so it's, um, yeah, so we're going to do some acorn squash and we're going to make it into a lovely dish with parsnips and um, parsnips, pecans, pomegranates, and all kinds of things. So it'll be really fun. It'll be a festive um, fall, wintry, you know, I don't know, almost Christmassy. Do I dare say that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's not December yet, although I am seeing a lot of Christmas lights up already but I think that people just need to do something festive right now and um, you know kind of get into the spirit of something other than what we've been involved in all all summer oh my gosh yes what a year it's been so um, yeah so I think that uh, we can we're going to talk about a couple things and um, you know, just a couple of reminders because I know a few people have um, had some uh, health issues lately. And I know, you know, the stress is really a super big thing. And, um, and so, yeah, so some people are maybe watching TV a little too much or looking on the Internet a little too much uh, for, their, for their own um, mental health. And uh, so, yeah, so you want to do something fun. Hi, good morning, Jane. Hi. Yeah, so be sure to, you know, to try and do something fun on the Internet, something light, you know, um, because we, we tend to get a lot of, you know, we're getting a lot of negative news lately. And, um, you know, it's, it's super important to try and do whatever you can to bring your energy up and be happy. So, um, yeah, laughing is good. Put on something, you know, there's so many really great, funny videos out there. And, um, you know, not to mention stuff on TV, but on the Internet. You know, there's all kinds of cute, heartwarming, um, funny things. And it's important to laugh, as, you know, some of us know. <laughs> some of us that laugh a lot. Um, you know, laughter really is the best medicine. It really is so healing and stress relieving. And so um, I encourage you to try and do that at least, um, you know, if you can, at least once a day, get into something that really makes you feel good, that totally takes your mind off everything else that's going on. Um, so the other thing is um, sleep, super important. Make sure you get your rest right now because... Um, because that's when your body heals. You know, your immune system is on when you're healing. And, uh, yeah, well, it is. Comedy shows, you really have to. Um, you have to watch comedy shows. You have to put on some cute little videos on the Internet because the stress is, is, um, stress is huge. And I, you know, I'd say sleep is number two, even though I'm such a huge obviously believer in food as healing um, you know your emotions and your nervous system has to work with all of that so we we supply the tools through food for healing and um, and that gives your body the the physical uh, means you know the vitamins and minerals and amino acids and everything to be able to heal right heal the cells and work on your body from a physical level but it's super super important to work on your body from a, a mental level and an emotional level for sure. And then sleep is just so, so important. Um, and you know, I know a lot of people are, um, 
working overtime, like seriously don't have a choice in what's, you know, what their life involves right now. And, um, but when you can try to get a nap, you know, if you aren't getting enough sleep, um, it's funny that, that some people think that naps are some sort of an old age weakness. And <laughs> I know I'm getting old and I, <laughs> I need my naps. But it really doesn't have anything to do with that. I mean, I know in a lot of the hotter countries like Mexico and that kind of thing, they take it quite seriously. You know, a lot of countries do take naps seriously. And, uh, and it is not a sign of old age and weakness, um, you know, necessarily. But it, uh, it heals the body. You know, it heals. You have that 15 minute break or whatever. And I know that for those of you that know me, um, well, uh, you know, meditation would be super great for those of you that can get a hold of some sort of um, meditation, um, you know, on the internet, uh, uh, whatever, a CD, do people use CDs anymore? I don't know, download, whatever that is. Um, even reading a meditation can be really helpful. So, um, yeah, so that's really, really important. You know, we're working with food here on this Facebook Live to encourage people to eat healthy and uh, that piece is kind of big right there. And uh, eat healthy and um, do all the things to really help your body heal. And we have all kinds of herbal um, recommendations and, and herbs from the kitchen that you can use to stay healthy. And yeah, I love my sleep too. <laughs> And, um, and so this is what the Facebook Live is all about. It really is not about me cooking. Um, it's about me sharing recipes that I do and, and the foods that I use and how I use them. And so it really is more about, um, you know, sharing information that's healthy and helpful. And I really love that we have such a great um, group on the Facebook Live that really is, uh, you know, we just get together share information and participate. I just pulled this out of the garden this morning. It's got, we have so many um, fir trees. I was gonna say evergreen, fir trees, yes. Yeah, they're firs. And uh, the little fir needle on my collards. Yeah, we had quite the windstorm yesterday. It was just blowing. Oh my gosh, all the branches were flying and trees were coming down and it was really something. So I'm not surprised to have extra uh, fir needles in my garden. So we're going to work with pomegranate today too, and um, and the pomegranate is a is a really awesome little thing. You know, I I never really know what to do with them, <laughs> other than put them in salads and things like that. And I guess that's what you do. So, but you know what? Speaking of um, brain health and and being happy and um, you know doing things that release stress. Pomegranates are really good for the brain, too. They're really good for the memory. Uh, they have used them uh, with Alzheimer's, uh, in Alzheimer's studies. Um, they've used them in, um, and I never know how to peel them either. You guys can certainly give me suggestions on this. Like I said, I'm a certified herbalist, and I work a lot with um, health and healing and, and helping people with health issues. I'm not a professional cook, and I have no idea how to open a a pomegranate <laughs> properly there must be a way um, but anyways um, I do know what they're good for and they're good for your good for your um, brain <laughs> as I try and think of what it is that they're good for in my brain good for prostate uh, they've got vitamin C potassium they've also been used um, in cancer studies as well like anti-cancer and um, I was going to add some onion to this, and I'm thinking I don't want to, so I'm not going to. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to not do that. Oh, uh, what else, what else, what else? It's so much fun when we do the Facebook Live because often the recipes just turn into something else. And, um, and that's super awesome because you can just play with food, play with healthy food, do fun things with it, you know, enjoy your cooking. And so maybe I'll add a piece of um, ginger. And what I do usually is I just have a random bunch of things that I use 
daily that I keep around me, right? So that because sometimes you forget to think, you forget about things that you would use if you if you saw them in front of you. And so, you know, we get into such a habit of cooking. I know I was speaking with one lady and she was saying that that she can't think of anything creative like I do. And and I don't, you know, and how do I be so creative? And I'm, and, um, I'm really not that creative. I just have things in the fridge that I need to use. And I don't, I don't like the routine of every, you know, the same thing all the time. I'm like, okay, how can I switch this up a little bit? And often, I mean, there are many, many things I love exactly the same over and over and over and over again, you know, like salsa and who doesn't love potatoes anyway they can be cooked and all kinds of things like that but it's like okay i've got um so many fantastic uh squashes and squashes squash plural <laughs> many different types of squash uh, and i got them from heather at eden tree farm and uh, uh they're just oh no i didn't get them from heather at even eden tree farm i got the persimmons at heather's Eden Tree Farm. I'm confused because I'm looking at persimmons. But the squash came from um, Kirsty Allen at um, Old Arch, Old Orchard Farm. I always have a hard time saying that. And so, um, yeah, so I have all these different squash. And so I thought, well, what can I do? You know, I mean, it's easy to bake it, which is lovely, uh, fantastic roasted. Um, but I thought about something different. And then I, um, I bought a parsnip. I actually bought the parsnip. And... Um, is that a piece of squash or is that the ginger? I think that's a squash. Okay, you need to be cut in half. You're too big, too big. Get back in there. Um, so yeah, so I thought squash and parsnips. And how could you do, do that? And um, putting them in the oven and roasting them is really awesome. Um, but I I wanted to not take that long to do that. So what my thought is in my head, because I'm always, I always have so many things to do and I try to do things as quickly as possible. I have, you know, a couple hundred 15 minute videos on healthy recipes and healthy food on, um, on my YouTube channel. And so I'm trying to think of what to do. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and what I can do really fast. So what I figured was in my head, okay, so if I sort of, pre-cook these and I get them tender crisp, then, uh, then it won't take as long at dinner time to put them in the oven and um, they'll already have all of their stuff in them. And so it's kind of like a pre-cooking thing. It just popped into my head. I don't know. So this is what we're doing and I can see these parsnips are going to be, um, I don't know much about um, how to cook <laughs> parsnips at all. Uh, so I can see that they look like they are yeah, they're cooking. They just don't look like they're cooking. Okay, so this is my plan. I know I'm driving you guys crazy. Anyways, oh yes, yeah, squash. Squash is, um, oh my god, it has um, squash. So vitamin C, potassium, uh, la, la, well, antioxidants, and the um, pomegranate has antioxidants as well. So all this stuff is really, really good for you. It's good for your eyes. Um, depending on the squash, you know, different ones have. Um, um, like beta carotenes and carotenoids and you know that's the antioxidants for your eyes and so yeah so you really want to incorporate all that into it and um, so what we're going to do now that they're cooking down I normally don't cook with oil much uh, but in this case I've just used water and I'm cooking this down but now I what I'm what I want to do is create a glaze on it and it's just so much easier to do a glaze with a little bit of olive oil. And so we're gonna let this come down because the, I don't know why, um, you could use coconut oil, which I didn't think of, and I could, but I'm not gonna run over there and grab it. That's why it's important to have those things around you, right? That's what I was saying was, if you keep the things around you that are healthy, uh, that you can just throw into any recipe, like for instance, one of the things super healthy for you is the is the um, cayenne, which you know I mean to me it's always out and beside the stove, but for you it may not be. So that really helps with circulation. It helps with um, you know your heart, cold hands and feet, um, 
helps opening up the capillaries. It's just so, uh, so totally awesome for so many things. The other thing I like to keep around handy is the, um, okay, good, thanks. Good to know, Manek. It's not so nice to have a Facebook Live where I learn things and you learn things and we share what we learn. So handy to have things like the seaweed. So this, I shouldn't put the steam over here. Um, you know, the seaweeds have such a, a huge amount of trace minerals. The seaweed has minerals that you don't find in any other foods. And so you're, you're um, supplying those tools to the body that they no wouldn't normally get from, say, potatoes and carrots and um, cut care, uh, bleh, cauliflower, broccoli, all those normal things that we eat. Seaweed has a lot of trace minerals that feed the brain. It feeds the thyroid, balances the thyroid. It has um, so much benefit to it. And so to keep that uh, handy is really, really important. And things like ginger, you know, things that are, that are, that have, you know, more of a concentration of health benefits. Um, you need to keep that stuff, in my opinion, for me, I need to keep that stuff um, near the stove so that I can see it. So when I'm doing, like when I'm doing the Facebook Live, but also at my, at my stove, I keep these things out. And it looks kind of messy, but um, if they were all in the cupboard, you know, I would forget all about adding seaweed. I would forget about adding, you know, um, we're going to add some minced garlic. Um, I would forget about adding those things like uh, maybe some herbal supplements and um, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so it's important to keep those things near you. I'm going to add some maple syrup to this to continue with our idea of a glaze. Okay, so maple syrup. And what I am going to do after this and see it's kind of glazing up a bit. What I'm actually going to do after this is to, uh, tonight, put them in the oven and, um, and just roast them, keep an eye on it, um, maybe a little piece of, um, in the beginning, well, they're already pretty cooked, so I'm going to turn this off, um, just so that it browns on the top and gets a beautiful little glazy thing happening. Okay, so now is the time, in my mind, in my mind, it's the time to add some pomegranate seeds. Okay, so off, turning off, and I'm gonna add the collards too. So that we have some greens in there and some, um, you know, some of the beneficial steamed greens. So they won't be, they won't be too, too cooked. Okay, we'll get our little pomegranate seeds in here and I don't know how many pomegranate seeds, you guys. So much fun cooking with a group. <laughs> so fun for you guys to join me. Okay, pomegranate seeds. And we know all the benefits of pomegranate seeds. So we don't want them overcooked because they really do want to be um, fairly fresh. So we're going to add the um, collards here. And I just fold them in half. They're so, so good for you. They're full of vitamin C, vitamin K, uh, very similar to cabbage, um, potassium, all kinds of really concentrated nutrition. And so you want to um, you want to incorporate your dark leafy greens whenever you can, as often as you can. And I'm cutting up real, cutting them up really fine because the collards are um, similar to kale in that they, um, they have a, a, a very tough cell wall. And so uh, we don't chew enough. You know, you're supposed to chew, believe it or not, you're supposed to chew each bite full 27 times. When I took my nutrition courses and training 100 years ago, um, yeah, that was it. You're supposed to chew 27 times. And the reason for that, uh, other than breaking down the food so that you actually absorb the goodness that's in it, is um, it acts, activates the enzymes in your saliva. And those enzymes help, along with your teeth breaking it down, the enzymes help to, um, to break down the food so that you're actually absorbing the goodness in the food. And so um, 
So if you're not chewing 27 times and you're eating something like this, which is super high in nutrition, um, but you can't break it down, then it's not really doing you a whole lot of good. So, uh, so really, really important to break, either cut it up really fine so that the cell walls are broken down. Even better would be to massage it. Like if you were using your collards in a salad, you could massage them with a little bit of um, salt. And if you wanted to add some coconut oil or some avocado oil or something like that, you could. And um, to help break that down. The other thing that people can do and, uh, and often do do, especially if you have uh, issues with indigestion or um, you know, acid reflux or any, any kind of digestive issues, take digestive enzymes. There's enzymes, um, the enzymes are like, the enzymes are in only in fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's like when you bite into an apple and then the apple starts to turn brown. So the enzymes are actually digesting the apple. It, they're making it rot, right? They're, they're breaking it down. And so those enzymes are only in fresh fruits and vegetables. There are no enzymes in anything cooked or dried. So there's no enzymes in bread or um, crackers or anything cooked, canned, um, meats, all that stuff does not have enzymes. So if you aren't eating a food that has enzymes in it to help to, to assist in digesting, then it's super beneficial to take a digestive enzyme with your meal. You'll find that that will stop your, um, yeah, digestion begins in the mouth. Absolutely. And so that's, the, so if you're not going to chew 27 times and, and activate that saliva and break down the food the way we were, the way we were born to, um, take digestive enzymes and the digestive enzymes will help to break down the food. And there's all kinds of different digestive enzymes. There's protease to digest proteins. There's amylase to digest, uh, um, sugars cellulase to digest starches, um, la 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 la, cellulase, lipase, lipase to digest fats, I'm going back many, many years. Anyway, make sure that you have a really good all-around enzyme um, that has either a combination of all those different enzymes, particular enzymes, or um, protease is really good. Um, the protease also, if you take a protease enzyme, Oh, my little pomegranates are losing all their red color. Hmm. Um, if you take a protease enzyme in between meals, it can help with inflammation. Um, and again, you have to, you really need to do that under supervision of a, um, you know, a natural health consultant uh, to make sure that you're not um, irritating too much. So it needs to be done in a certain way, but it will, uh, it will, hunt for undigested proteins in the tissues, in the blood, um, in the cells that are, that are creating inflammation. And so taking uh, protease enzymes can be really helpful for inflammation. Like if you have a lot of inf inflammation, like I know with fibromyalgia, um, taking a, a protease enzyme in between meals so that it looks for the undigested bits of protein. This is microscopic, right? So it looks for those um, undigested bits of protein and, and um, those undigested bits of protein are actually what create uh, toxicity and inflammation. So, yeah. So anyway, that's a whole nother, I have actually PowerPoints and lectures on that. Okay, so um, I don't think I put any Celtic sea salt in this. I'm getting so distracted. And um, Celtic sea salt, where did you go? Hmm. Oh, you're way over there. All right, I'm not gonna run around and do that. I did add some seaweed that'll add a little bit of salt. I'll add the Celtic sea salt after so that I'm not running around in the kitchen distracting you guys. But what I wanted to talk talk to you, share with you uh, was about the enzymes. And oh my gosh, that garlic is just smelling amazing. It's all smelling so amazing. Um, the persimmons, yes, yes. Okay, we spoke about the persimmons yesterday. And I'm so... Um, fascinated because I don't know much about them. I like using them. I just learned about them. I don't know if it was like two years ago or even a year ago, um, but they do, they're, they're the really coolest thing. I think they are kind of like a cross between a apricot and a peach and an orange to me. Um, they have all the antioxidants in them. They're like super, super healthy. They have um, manganese, which is a really good uh, one of the um, 
you know, one of the, one of the, um, manganese, one of the minerals that we don't really often talk about too much is potassium, has phosphorus, has copper. Um, it's, it's, um, I said A and C, A and C, A and C. It's apparently, I looked up the research a little bit because I know pretty much nothing about it. And, um, and so it's apparently from um, Asia. And uh, mm, I think it grows in Mexico too. This, this is the one that came from Eden Tree Farms from Heather Shoby here in Port Alberni. And so I, you can see I bought several of them because I love them so much. Uh, and they're not quite ripe yet, um, so they're gonna, they're going to, I should actually put an apple with them to help them ripen faster, although I'm really not in any hurry. <laughs> and so, um, so they're not quite ripe yet, but um, uh, apparently they would take, and I find this really interesting because when I, when I cut it open, um, they have the weirdest seeds, like the seeds are almost invisible to me. And, uh, and apparently they use the seeds for a coffee substitution, which I just really can't imagine, but maybe I'll try that because I do use, um, well, I use dandelion instead of coffee, dandelion powder. It's the, it's the root, not the leaf. The root powder is very coffee-like. And, um, um, oh my gosh. Um, The, one of the things, I'm trying to think of the, the other thing that I read about them. Um, oh, they said something about the weather. That when the persimmons come, um, when, either when they come or when they're ripe, it's a prediction for snow. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I thought that was kind of interesting too. And also, um, the other thing that I learned, it was, it's called food of the gods. So I thought that was kind of interesting as well. I think they're just such a cool thing. The, I think, you know, in my personal opinion, I, I'm sure that you, I haven't even, never even looked up a recipe for a persimmon, but I'm sure with all of the, um, all the things that it does, uh, that it's probably best eaten fresh. And again, we go into that whole digestive thing with the fresh. And I know I've said this to you guys before, um, any fresh fruit, because it digests so quickly, right? You bite into an apple, it starts turning brown and breaking down. Because it digests so quickly, um, it can uh, digest within 20 minutes. And if you're eating other things with it, those other things will take longer. So if it's uh, whatever, cooked beans, pasta, you know, rice, uh, anything that's cooked, especially meats, are going to take a lot longer to digest. And so if the fruit's in there and it's all broken down in 20 minutes, it will start to ferment. Like we, we are learning, I've been sharing with you guys all the different uh, reasons for fermenting and, and what the benefits are, but, um, but you don't want it fermenting in, the, in your stomach because you have, we have our beautiful here fermented um, salsa and the bubbles are coming up, right? This is fermenting and it's creating a lot of gas and lactic acid and and if you're using this as a probiotic, it's beautiful and wonderful, and you should definitely um, do this and, and eat it. But you would not mix this, um, you would not mix fresh fruit. Like once that's fermented, it's already broken down so that it can be blended with other things. But to take a fresh, um, you know, pomegranate's probably not so much, but a, a fresh fruit, um, especially citrus, with a full meal will uh, will create a lot of gas and a lot of bloating and usually indigestion for many, many people. So that's why, like I was saying, when I took nutrition 100 years ago, um, when they talk about fresh fruit, they say eat it 20 minutes before a meal so it can digest and go through and not create those problems, or two hours after. So your fresh fruit should be before a meal or two hours after. And, um, and so, uh, that's really important if you are, um, even if, you know, like, say you have a great big dinner, a full-on dinner, and then you eat uh, fresh, uh, whatever, strawberries or, or um, bananas or apples or whatever afterwards, it, that, um, it's still going to mix with everything else, and it's still going to 
try to digest itself and in which it's going to start to ferment. It's going to create the lactic acid and it's going to create the gas and bloating. So for some people, they have a, you know, um, what do they call that? A steel stomach or whatever. There's a word for that anyway. Uh, that nothing bothers them no matter how they eat or how they mix it up and that's awesome that's fine if you have a good solid digestion and stomach that works amazingly and you never have any digestive issues then that's awesome but if you do have um, oh I feel so bloated I feel so yucky every time I eat I feel horrible make sure you're not mixing fresh fruit with that meal because that will be contributing to it I mean, there could be a lot of other contributing factors for sure. If you're having issues, go to the doctor, um, make sure you don't have an ulcer or whatever else is going on. Um, you know, make sure that you've found out what the issue is. And if the issue is, um, they, you know, if they say there's no real issue or whatever, um, and you're still having this problem and you're taking antacids, which actually stop the digestion, they stop the acid, but they stop the digestion as well. And we need to digest. Anyway, that's a whole other story. But uh, rather than doing that, just make sure that you're not putting any fresh fruit with your um, with your meal. But for sure, add all the salad, greens, vegetables, raw vegetables, because they digest at a little bit lower rate. And so um, they will combine well with the other foods that you're eating and not create all those problems. So I'm just looking at all the new people that came on. Hi, everybody. So yeah, so that's the uh, that's the thing for today. The beautiful persimmon, you guys should check it out. And um, that's it, cast iron stomach. That's what a steel, a steel cast iron stomach. Anyways, that's awesome. Thank you for hanging out on Facebook Live, and it's so fun to um, to share with everyone and to exchange comments. And so uh, feel free to put your questions in the um, comments and the posts, and check out my Instagram, my YouTube channel. And um, we will see you tomorrow morning at 11. Let me know what else you want me to experiment with because it's so much fun to make new things with you guys. And I will um, take a picture of this. So this is going to go in the oven and just get browned and, um, and hopefully a little glazy looking. And so I will take pictures and show you. So check that out. Those pictures will be on my Instagram and the recipe will be on my YouTube. Okay, have a good day. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 11.